Today, we're going to learn about sniffing packets with a secure and sandbox sniffing application called SniffGlue on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have ever run Wireshark as root before and seen the warning that it might be dangerous and promptly ignored it, it's because this actually could be a risk on an unknown network. Now that's because you never know if there's a zero day vulnerability out there that could affect your system and then promptly run as root on your computer if you're logged into Wireshark as root. A better way of doing this is to properly sandbox it. And instead of that, we can take the shortcut and run a tool called SniffGlue. Now, SniffGlue is awesome because it is a passive net network sniffer, and that allows us to see what's happening on a network and identify targets for follow-up reconnaissance without anyone being the wiser that we're on the network. Now, this is much more stealthy than something like an ARP scan, where we're basically scanning the whole network and alerting everyone to our presence. So this is a stealthy and easy way of getting an idea of what's going on in a network in real time. Now, in order to do this, you'll need to have an Ubuntu or Kali system set up and fully updated. And if you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. Once your Ubuntu or Kali system is set up and ready to go, then we can begin. Today, we're going to get started using SniffGlue, which is a way that we can actually start sniffing and interpreting packets once we have access to a network. Now, it's important to mention that if you don't have a password to a network, uh, then this will not work. Although if you are looking at a open network, let's say you're at a Starbucks or something, SniffGlue is a fascinating way to see what's going on on the network and maybe start to see some interesting requests or uh, DNS targets. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff you could find. Now the first step to installing this is to go to the GitHub page and we'll go to it here uh, at uh, github.com slash kpcyrd slash SniffGlue. Now, if you scroll down, you can see that this is a uh, network sniffer written in Rust, and Rust is not uh, always as easy to install on Ubuntu or Kali, but that's okay because the way that it's installed is pretty straightforward. So one of the things that sets this apart, as it mentions, is that it uh, makes it secure by sandboxing it and make sure that no code is being allowed to run under the uh, permissions that you're running SniffGlue under. So that's really cool. And on Arch Linux, there's a really easy way of installing this. If you're doing Arch, it's just pacman tech s SniffGlue. But if you try to do apt install SniffGlue, it will not work on Kali or Ubuntu or any other Debian type system. So that's too bad. Now, uh, in order to set this up, it, you can see there's kind of partial instructions for how to set this up uh, here. Uh, you can just go ahead and install these required libraries. So that's going to be libcapdev and libseccompdev. And this is for the secure computing module and the pcap uh, parsing. So we can go into our terminal window and type ap sudo apt install. And then just install these two different libraries. And I'm running in Ubuntu, so if you guys can run this on, if I can run this on Ubuntu, you guys can run this on Kali. Uh, so we've now got those installed, and we can go ahead and run this cargo install sniff glue. Now, cargo is an installer for Rust tools, and it may or may not be installed on your system by default. If I go ahead and run this, I'll do sudo cargo install. It's gonna go ahead and go to crates.io and download everything, and great. But if that did not work for you because you don't have Gargo, fortunately, it is pretty easy to install it. You can just type apt install cargo, sudo apt install cargo. And there you go, we have the installer so we can go ahead and download the script. Great, so now the way that we'll, uh, and as you can see, we've uh, installed the script, but once it's actually installed, we need to make sure that we actually are able to run it. Now we can't just type sniff glue because it's not automatically added to our path. So for now, because we just want to jump in and see this, we can type the tilde um, slash period cargo slash bin. And we're going to CD into that. 
All right, so now we're going to type ls, and we can see in this directory we have sniff glue. Great. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this tool with the help file and we'll see what happens. So we'll type period slash sniff glue and tack help. Okay, so we can see all the various options. We can basically provide detailed output. We can do a JSON output. We can do promiscuous mode on our interface. We can do uh, open this to read a PCAP file so we can actually read back things that we've intercepted. Uh, we can look for the version and we can show for both. So it'll show, show more packets. So let's go ahead and just run this and see if we can start sniffing some packets. We'll select uh, P for promiscuous mode and we'll also select uh, verbose. Uh, let's do D for detailed first and then we'll go from there. So I'm not gonna supply it with a device. I'm gonna see if it'll just pick it up by default. Let's see. Oh, and of course it wants us to pseudo it. All right, so it automatically selected the wireless network adapter on my system that's connected to a uh, network. And now it is listening on the network for all sorts of stuff. So preferably we would let this run for a while and we would be able to see, hey, we've got some activity on the network. Now this is, we can see there's a get request and we're probably actually at this point just sniffing ourselves because we are actually connected to this network. But as we sit here and listen, we should be able to actually identify, uh, let's say various things that are connecting, maybe something that's uh, making requests, um, all sorts of network traffic that's going over the internet because we're in promiscuous mode, we should be able to see. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of this command and we'll construct a new one by actually specifying which interface we wanna use. Now, if I go back to the GitHub, you can see the types of protocols that this can actually dissect. This can be ethernet, IPv4, IPv6, ARP requests. Um, there's all sorts of things that this can actually sniff. So if we're looking for things like DNS requests to identify web pages someone is going to or something like that, this is a great way to start to do it. So this time I'm going to modify our request from before. Let's see if we can bring this up. And we're going to instead add, uh, just attack V for verbose. And in another terminal window, I'm going to get the name of my interfaces. And this time we're going to use this super long one. All right, let's try running this. Okay, so already we've intercepted ARP requests. So we are sitting here quietly sniffing and we're enumerating different devices on the network by just intercepting ARP requests that are going out and uh, basically identifying a couple different things. Here we can see two things, the uh, IP address of the router and the MAC address of the router, which is useful for spoofing. We would need this if we were gonna do like better cap or something uh, to try to do art poisoning. We can also see the various hosts that are checking in and being assigned or verifying their IP addresses. 192.168.07, 192.168.59.42. So we're starting to kind of see what's on this network. And as devices are going to one thing or another, we should be able to basically see what they're doing, provided they're making requests that we can intercept. Now this could be going to you know, web pages in general, it could be surfing traffic. Um, the number of different protocols we can intercept is really impressive. But what we can kind of use this as is a way of maybe like looking at what people are going to and identifying what's maybe like a phishing page you could set up, or even identifying the host names of devices on the network. Here we go, see we have a host name of Fox, and we can use that to start figuring out which device belongs to which person by then comparing, for example, the uh, MAC address, which you can use find out the manufacturer of with the host name to identify, all right, this has a host name of uh, this device, uh, or sorry, of this uh, name, and then it has a MAC address that tells me that it's an Apple device. So it's probably that person sitting over there who, uh, you know, if it's a male name, it, uh, a lot of Apple devices are named uh, just directly after their users. So if this is a host name of Alex's uh, iMac, and then I see somebody sitting over here with an iMac, this is probably their MAC address. So that could be a way that you can start to not only identify who's on the network, but what sorts of devices they have and which IP address that device is at. 
Now, normally you would have to get in and start scanning away to do this, and that could instantly get you noticed on a network that's looking for suspicious behavior from a device that maybe might not be permitted to join the network. Instead, we can sit here like this and start to learn about the devices on the network passively. And as soon as we start seeing things like uh, maybe like a domain name or something else that was being entered into this, we would be able to start tracking down the individual domains that are being entered as well. Of course, we can also see that we're periodically sniffing, I'm pretty sure this is just sniffing ourselves, but anybody who's going to an HTTP website that's not encrypted, we will be able to intercept the requests on the network and identify what they were trying to do because we can actually decode these packets completely. And in this case, we can see it's probably our Ubuntu system that's just checking in. Although if we want to double check, we can always scan the network and identify uh, which ones are ours and which ones are not by just going ifconfig and then grep inet. We can see ours is 192.168.0.16. So any traffic that's coming from a different, so it looks like this one is coming from here. We want to go ahead and follow up on some uh, target we've identified. In the new window, we can do nmap. Hmm. And attempt to identify the operating system of this device. Once we know what we've located, and I'm guessing because it's uh, it's saying that's an Ubuntu user agent, we'll probably find that it's, oh, in this case, it's actually a phone. Then we can start to do further scans and identify exactly what sort of device this is. We can see that there might be maybe a network camera or something else hosted on it, and then maybe go after those services that are exposed. So this is how we can kind of start to escalate. And again, if we want to start scanning for vulnerable things, maybe we want to know that there's a port 22 or something on this, then we could see, for example, start poking around and find out which surfaces are available for us to attack and which ones might be closed. So here we've gone from completely passive to just kind of sitting back here and looking at what kind of authorizations are going over the network to actually attacking these services and trying to identify what it is we have to do to actually get into one based on what's available. If you manage to get access to a network, Sniff Glue is an easy way of identifying not only targets on the network, but maybe resources that are being accessed if everybody's logging into a portal or using a specific service. This can be advantageous when you're deciding how to attack the network or the users. So Sniff Glue is a great way of doing this while avoiding the risk of running an unsandbox program. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have any trouble following along, you can check out the Nullbyte article link in the description. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.